the nine belts of self-esteem. So if you haven't been here for the past sort of four weeks or so, you can go to our YouTube channel and check it out. It's all live streamed. So um, as you know, I think last week uh, or week before, about 460 of our Bridge Girls crew around Australia got online, um, which was really cool. So uh, welcome to all you guys that are online tonight. Um, tonight you're in for a treat. We're up to our green belt and um, it's just a really cool night. So if you haven't been practicing uh, the different parts of how to care for you, how to self-defend you, and this isn't about, you know, Yahoo, you know, this is about um, knowing how to protect yourself uh, when other people want to bully you, when other people want to um, take uh, part of who you are away. Um, this whole series is dedicated to, to that. So if you're new in the room tonight, uh, it's cool, it's great to have you with us. Um, and uh, we hope you get something out of tonight. Tonight you're going to hear from two delicious young men. And, oh. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? Yeah, spicy, are they? They're spicy! <laughs> <laughs> hey? They're chicken McNuggets, they're spicy. Oh, they're spicy. They're spicy. <laughs> right, um, these two guys do have um, Tinder profiles. No, 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 they no, don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Swipe right every time! No, 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 okay, so... Um, uh, I've sussed it out, they look pretty good in our man candy. So the, um, I want to introduce these guys to you, these um, uh, two, of our, um, two of our leaders at Bridge Builders, and uh, they've become good friends as well. Uh, they are extraordinary men with, uh, with something to share with you tonight. So I'd like us to put um, the things at the end of your hand, at the end of your arms together, and welcome the, put the end of your arms together. <laughs> so this is how we clap at Bridge Builders, right, you know, like that, right. That's, now you just make the noise. <laughs> right, that's how we clap from now on. And uh, put your hands together for these guys. Do respect. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I've ever been uh, introduced better than that. That was, uh, yeah. Beautiful, just like you. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. <laughs> when you think of the colour green, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? Go. Go. Awesome. Envy. Envy. I said Interesting, that. I like it. Yeah. Avocado. Avocado, I like it. The langid or her hair. The langid or her hair. Either or. Anyone else? Happy is my favourite colour. That's good. Happy is good. Cassie, you got one? Nature. Nature. I like that one. The green sludge goes from Ghostbusters. Excellent. <laughs> I want you to guess what I'm going to draw and uh, you get a hundred. 150, 150 points for whoever gets this right first. Ready? <laughs> Who said that first? All right, Naomi gets 150 points for her time. Who's my dream? All right, all right, all right. That's the end of that game. That's all we'll play. That's the end of the game. All right, now on to some words. Now, trees. What's so good about trees? Why have I drawn a tree? Trees, trees, and I'll answer these questions from now on. Trees, <laughs> I'll answer them for you. I'm doing you a favour. Trees, in my opinion, are very commonly uh, bound to the colour green, and I personally absolutely love trees. I think they're fantastic beings because they can somehow get that stuff from the sun and turn it into food. I uh, just a magical process that we call photosynthesis. They turn that into food and they grow into these big majestic beings that then provide life to everything else. I think that's pretty bloody awesome, in my opinion. Does anyone else agree? Do you think that's yeah. awesome? Yeah. Yes, that's, that's, I think that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Um, so yeah, when I think about the color green, um, I also think about the core value, or one of the two core values that I was raised on, and that's called respect, which is what we're going to be talking about tonight. And um, because I love trees so much, I respect them for what they do, and that is provide us with life. Um, and I think about respect because while I respect life and how difficult it can be, the trees are what allow us to breathe, and everything to breathe. So they're kind of a central point of our ecosystem day in and day out and I respect them mostly because they use all that energy from the sun to grow and overcome so many challenges from their environment that they grow in 
initially and then use the rest of their life to give life to everything else. So for those of you who know Josh and I, um, we're back. We're talking about respect tonight. I'm sure most of you have heard us speak at least once, um, whether that was together or separately. Um, for those of you who are joining us live, my name's James Lee. I'm a Red Leader, and this is my um, senior leader, Josh Baldrick. Josh Baldrick. Josh Baldrick. <laughs> the big JB. Didn't know and I was to say my own name or not. <laughs> you did, and so did I, so that makes two of us. Um, we want you to take notes tonight. So please, uh, because we won't be giving any handouts out, pull out your phone, start taking a couple of notes at the start, um, and then we'll give you maybe a point or two later on on what else we want you to add in there. Um, so in your notes, I want you... Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so make sure you're taking notes and we'll give you a couple of points on the way. Yes, thank you, Jack. My pleasure. Sorry, boys, just before we go on, Tyler's in the States online, 425 AM, so if you could just say hello. <laughs> hey, everyone say hi to Josh. Hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. 425. That's something. That's something. He's in New York saying so g'day to us in some degrees. Wicked. So, uh, 425 AM, that is commitment indeed. Good to see you, big boy. We miss you. Big boy. Big boy. <laughs> Um, welcome to the fourth belt. So, tonight's all about um, getting our green belt. So we've done our white and our yellow so and our orange, so tonight's green. Um, the colour green is mostly associated with life in the environment. Check it up, I googled it. So, um, so tonight James and I want to share a bit about how respect as a value can shape your life and change your environment. Um, we all know respect is here, but it's different for everyone. We all know how to do it and that it's important to do, but do we know why? Do we know what effect it could have on our lives um, or those who are around us? What opportunities it could be creating for us? Um, tonight we're going to dive into our own worlds and evaluate how different they could be if we had more respect for ourselves and others. In your notes tonight, I want you to put a heading that says at the top, right at the top, respect for me and take notes based on that heading what is respect for yourself so respect and this is my own opinion respect is a like a fluid it surrounds us embraces us and binds us all together as individuals as and and as a people respect becomes a foundation in our friendships in our relationships at home at work in our learning environments etc but what is it what is the importance of respecting ourselves? And can we respect ourselves if we don't already respect the people around us? Self-respect is the self-love and acceptance that allows us to say, I'm worthwhile, I believe I'm a strong individual, and I'm a contributor to our society. Um, respect is very simply treating people the way they should be treated. And I say that because, believe it or not, some people don't believe they should be treated with respect and believe others shouldn't be treated with respect. So I say we should treat people the way they should be treated. A remarkable influencer named Confucius. Does anyone not know who Confucius is? Good, that's good. Everyone knows Confucius. What are you talking about? You know Confucius. <laughs> Confucius suggested that without respect, there is what is there to distinguish men from beasts. Civilization works because we respect the rules of life that we ourselves came to agree on, which the vast majority abide by. You know, we, all, we all abide by our laws, don't we? I hope. <laughs> mm. One example is the agreement that we came to very early, in our very early days of humanity, is the rule against taking another's life. The righteous implementation of this rule came from a mutual respect for life, and how very valuable it is. We all agree that life is quite valuable, don't we? Because we only get one shot at it. But can we imagine what life would be like without respect, without laws? I want you to picture chaos in your imagination. Imagine if all of a sudden there were no laws. What do you think would happen? Any ideas? No laws from the crowd. Be dead. People would be dead. War. 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 No order. Hmm? No, no order. order. Yeah. Chaos. We might not even be here. That's right. 
So eventually people are going to try and create their own personal ones to make others live by them? That's exactly right. Yes, very right. Eventually we would come to order, but in the world that that doesn't happen and we have no laws, as we've said, there would be murder, there would be theft, nobody would really own anything anymore, nobody would be making food or clothes, everybody would be raiding stores for the things that are left, people would be taking each other's lives for food, there'd be no order anymore, there'd be no government services, there'd be no police to enforce the law, there'd be no ambulances to save people from taking each other's lives, from crushing their cars because they're going at 200 kilometres per hour on the freeway because there's no one to enforce the 100 zone. There are no laws. There is no order. Now I want you to imagine a life with rules that we have today but there are no ramifications behind them. So nobody respects these laws. So nobody is following them. I hope that you recognise that between a world with laws and no respect and no laws to begin with is the same image. If we don't respect the laws that are in place, where would we be? We'd be in the, spa the, the same spot. Everybody would be in chaos because there would be no order. So JB, on a personal note, I want you to tell us why respect is such an important component to life. Hmm. I certainly can, James. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, respect for me, it, it builds relationships, it grows connection, and can help you surround yourself with good quality people that will help you succeed in life. It's a value that can turn an acquaintance into your best mate, and it's also a value that can make your best mate an acquaintance. If you respect someone and they show you the same level in return, it sets a foundation for how you'll always treat each other. It allows you to trust someone because you know that your thoughts and ideas will always be respected and valued. And of course works the same for them, that you are someone that people will trust because you are always respectful of their ideas and thoughts. For me it carries across all aspects of life, whether it be at work with your co-workers or at home with your family, at school with your friends, we need respect wherever we go. Respect creates new opportunities for you, the ability to make new close friends that are just as respectful networking, uh, that's a typo, don't worry about that. <laughs> but it, they're just as respectful as you. Um, networking and respecting people come hand in hand and can lead to new job opportunities, new career paths. So everyone's heard the old saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So respect the people around you as you never know who they may know. That's a lot of that. <laughs> um, when you look at your own life and when you focus on your own hobbies or sports teams that you might be a part of or whatever <coughs> extra curricular activities that you might do, um, you'll be able to see the same thing. Respect is a foundation for any team or group. As James pointed out in his story on laws and respect, it's basically a set of basic ground rules on which everyone operates on. So what would happen in your team if it isn't there? Anyone got any ideas? There'd be no team. Spot on. 100%. Exactly. They break down. That's what I had written. So there might as well not be a team. You're thinking about bridge builders and coming here on a Monday night, and there was a person being disrespectful. Would you want to be their friend? Would you want that person to be around? Would you want them to come every Monday if they were disrespectful? Think about your own life and what it would be like if you didn't respect other people. Would, you, would others respect you in return? Would you be su succeeding at your job? Would you have good friendships? These are all questions I want you to ask yourself. Jimmy, have you found a time in your life where you were missing respect, oh, when respect was missing from within your life? Yeah, I have actually. Um, and um, this was a component of my, my schooling days. Back when I was in primary school, um, I spent four years in training doing karate. Now a lot of people do karate for a little bit in their life, you know, a little bit of self-defense training. The, uh, and for most of you that have done that or know a little bit about it, the entire foundation of self-defense and karate and kung fu is based on the foundation of respect. Because if there's no respect, there is punishment. 
we respect everyone, we respect our senseis, etc. And it's not that I didn't have respect in the process of actually uh, combat or defending myself or with the equipment that I used. I didn't respect the process of mastering the art of self-defense. And when I say that, um, this is what I mean. <coughs> Through my four years of training, when I did karate, when I trained in <coughs> self-defense, I moved up through the ranks, I went through my belts, um, I trained hard and harder and harder and harder. I did all of the classes that I could. I think I ended up doing three or four, and then the demo team as well. <coughs> and that was extraordinary. I loved what I did, but I became <coughs> bored. And even though my dad was telling me, you gotta practice, you know, practice, practice, practice makes perfect. I didn't understand at that younger age that, uh, that lacking of maturity. Um, I didn't understand the respect you needed in the process of perfection to actually go through with it. And that's why I said, well, I can't go any, I can't go in any higher classes. There are none left to go in, so I might as well just give up. And I wish I didn't, 100%. I wish I never gave up, because that's something that I love doing. Um, and it was very important and a healthy part of my lifestyle to develop uh, respect. That was very important. Um, so yeah, I regret, I regretted leaving, and I'd probably still be there if I respected the process. I'd have a black belt instead of just a green, funnily enough, which is what we're on tonight. So that's my story, but Josh, what about you, my friend? Was there a point in time when you came to understand the importance of respect for yourself? Yeah, yeah, I definitely did, and I, I think I probably learned it a bit of a harder way as well. Um, respect is something that you know people always throw around that it's you know, and you hear people tell us all the time how important it is. But for me, I didn't realise why it was important for a long time. Um, I was always um, told that respect was important, but when I was growing up, it was never really modelled to me. I never had a, a good, strong, respectful role model. I never had someone that guided me and told me, no, that's not, that's a disrespectful thing to say. That's a disrespectful thing to do, and you shouldn't have done it. Or modelled to me what a respectful person would look like. I never had that guidance and that uh, desire to be someone of um, respect. Um, so for me, it was never really a priority. And that carried across into all of my friendships. I pushed a lot of people away and I disrespected a lot of my close friends um, to the point where they didn't want to hang out with me anymore. They didn't want to be around me. Nobody really reached out to me or asked what I was up to or how I was going. Nobody really wanted to talk to me because I wasn't a nice person to talk to. Um, my tipping point for me was when I realised that I had isolated myself. I sat there and I just felt alone. I had no one. And I remember sitting there, it was one night in particular that um, I left school by this stage and I had started, I just started work um, and didn't want to hang out with the family because all we did was argue anyway. I sat there looking for people to talk to on Facebook right now and I just had to keep flicking through people. No, they don't like me. I told that person they were an idiot. No. I haven't got on with that person for years. I found that I'd ruined pretty much every good relationship that I'd had, and the best thing I had was an acquaintance. And I don't know if you've ever reached out to an acquaintance on Facebook, it's a bit of an awkward thing. Hey, how you going? Long time no see. <laughs> what are you up to? And then the conversation doesn't really go anywhere from there. I had become so caught up in myself and what I was doing that I had hurt and squashed the people closest to me along the way. I hold respect so highly now because I've seen what not having it looks like. I know what it does to not only myself but the other, but the people around me, to my friends that I lost. I know how it can affect our home life with our families, to how it can affect even our closest of friendships, like I've said. Um, I don't want you to raise your hands but answer it in your own mind. How many of you have lost all of those things, have lost close friends, pushed away your own family, pushed away whoever it might be that is around you because you haven't got respect or you haven't got respect for yourself. How many of you 
I thought about whether it was worth losing those relationships. How many of you have lost yourself because you couldn't respect yourself? These are all questions I want you to ask yourself and really think about tonight as well. Two weeks ago, Beck got up here and delivered a beautiful asset on self-esteem. But how can we apply that to our lives and how can we improve it? Uh, improve on ourselves if we don't respect us, if we don't value and listen to ourselves, and if we can't do it for us, then how are we going to do it for other people? This series is all about self-defense, protecting yourself and building your own defenses up to become a more resilient person. So tonight, James and I both want to give you one challenge each to help you fulfill a respectful way of life. So we've got one challenge each. Um, <coughs> mine's sort of tipping on the solution-ish side, and Josh's is more of a challenge to give it somewhat a bit of diversity. Um, this is definitely where we want you to take a couple of notes so that you can refer to the asset later. Mm. My solution for the evening is to selflessly affirm in the best way that we can. And what I mean by that is speak highly of others the way I speak highly of trees except say it right to their face. Something I've learnt on my ongoing journey is to treat the janitor of an organisation with the same respect as the CEO. And that's a figure of speech, but that's just short to say everybody, no matter <coughs> what position they hold, deserves the same respect. My dad used to tell me a story of his experience leading the professional team at a very prestigious hotel in England called the Hotel Como. He told me that when he arrived to begin the job and everyone was introducing themselves, he got around to the, um, the butler and the butler said, me sir, I'm just the butler. My dad looked at him and he paused for a moment and he said, sorry, what? And the butler said, I'm just the butler, sir. And my dad replied to him, there's no just in our titles. This woman here, who was a foyer attendant, is not just a foyer attendant. She is the foyer attendant. Without you, without any one of us, we wouldn't be able to hold this team and this wonderful hotel to the high standards of its reputation. So the man kind of smiled a little bit, stood up a little straighter, patted off his uh, shirt and he said back to him, then I'm the janitor, sir. Not only in that moment did my father honour this man straight to his face, but he established respect with all of his employees by affirming this man straight through his eyes, right into his head. You are important. You are a, an individual that should be respected. And that is one of the cores of self-respect that he took pride in. The moral of that story is very simple. Nobody is just anyone. You are you and everyone else is an individual and we should all treat ourselves and everyone else <coughs> with respect. We must respect the life of every person we come into contact with because we're all human beings. In a perfect world, there wouldn't be any war, any violence, any theft, any of those things of human fault because everybody would perfectly respect one another and there would be peace. Very contrast to what we were thinking about before, a little bit of chaos. But while a perfect world is unrealistic, you can definitely do your own peace. <coughs> Give others a reason to respect you as an individual. Now for Josh's challenge, he's gonna personally talk to you about applying the learnings 
of what we've been talking about. Thanks, James. Um, tonight, I wanted to get across not what respect is. We all know what respect is. We've, we've heard people stand up before and tell us how to be respectful. Not how we can model it, because we've heard the same thing again. We've heard how we can model it. But for me, what I wanted to get across tonight is why we should model it and how it can change our lives and our environment. Like, you know, colour green. <laughs> Without respect, we lose a lot of who we are as people and it can easily get lost and we can easily get lost and go down the wrong path towards self-destruction. But with it, within ourselves, we can be better and improve ourselves to others so we can build relationships and create exciting new opportunities. Respect is not the answer for everything, but is most definitely the foundation of it. So my challenge for you this week and every week preceding that <laughs> is to apply respect to your life and see what difference it could make for you. I personally had to learn how to apply it within my own life and believe me, it takes a lot of practice. But it's turned my relationship, especially with my siblings, around. From endless fighting to the point where we can't stand to look at each other all the time. <laughs> we just, as soon as we came into con, you know, as soon as we saw each other after school, we just straight to our rooms and just never really socialised or spoke to each other. Or you know, if it was, it was always put the window back up. I don't like the wind in the back seat. <laughs> so. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah, not wrong. yeah, I know. I remember that one. School <laughs> conversations. <laughs> but for me, the the difference was that being able to respect my own blood, um, it it changed my relationship with both my sisters and my parents as well, and it allowed me to build a new relationship to a point where those are people that I can trust. Those are people that I can speak to and communicate to and express my emotions to and I take pride in standing next to and I take pride in in serving on the leadership team with every Monday night. For me respect is more than just a word it's more than just something that you do for me respect is uh, it's a game changer it, it'll it'll change your life and that's what I want to ex express to you guys tonight I want to show you that the difference that it can make is outstanding and without respect uh, we have nothing, so. Thank you, sir. That's my challenge. Yeah, so we've uh, talked about a challenge and a solution for the evening. Uh, we both want to thank you very much for listening to us. We hope you've taken on to <coughs> this evening. Considered what respect means to you personally, because it can be very different for everybody. Um, we hope you can take something individually that may change yours or somebody that's closely affiliated with you uh, we hope that can change one or both of those lives. So thanks very much for paying attention. Thank you online for joining us tonight. And we're... Good job, we're not over yet. So here's the thing, boys, I want to challenge you about and ask you about and ask you guys too. Um, what do you think, for you Josh it was loss, right? It was with the game changer, right? So you got to this point where you thought, uh, uh, Golly, you know, everything's gone, and that was a game changer for you, a turning point for you. What, what do you reckon uh, is your game changer for respect for you? Anybody brave enough to say? Where, if you self respect, if you respect yourself, where was the point that you went, you know what, I'm just going to do this differently? Yeah? By watching the way other people treat other people. Yeah, that can be disturbing, can't it? Because you might not have the confidence to be able to address that situation of, that you see happening in front of you, but then you realise, I, I'm not going to be. I don't want to be like that. I, I want to be a different person. I want to be a person that stands out, eh? You know, I want to be a person, and you are. You are a standout, Hawaii. You know, you are an amazing leader. You know, and you, you are a solid girl. You know, you're in that space where you just really um, set that thing that's in your mind and in your heart that you saw, you've become that, because that's what we see. You wouldn't be on our leadership team if you weren't. You know, it's as simple as that. So we'll respect you, Dale. I, I believe you're walking that out, absolutely. So good for you. Yeah. Holly? Yep. In primary school, um, I was always on the outside. Mm -hmm. And I was always told that I wasn't 
out of the bird coming to us by myself. And I started to speak my mind, and that's when people started to include me. Why were you on the outside? Were you a bit different? Yeah, I like weird people. We're full. This room's full of weird ones. Yeah, are we all weird here? Yeah. Hands up, all right. So you're in good company, girlfriend. Yeah. I think the reason was I was closed. You were closed. I never said much in class. I was always sort of just quiet. So part of your journey there is, if I hear that right, is that you were a person that was okay with who you are, but you might fear of what other people might think about you or you couldn't hold conversation or you didn't know how they were going to treat you so therefore you had a bit of a that kind of put you on the outer you're a bit quieter yeah I acted like someone I you acted like someone you weren't i don't know anybody in the room would ever act like that <laughs> <laughs> um similar to what james was saying about saying that he was just the butler I used to do that a lot, saying I'm just another girl. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't until like you start to see other people do that that you say that to other people. Which yeah. Is and it's so funny in Australia, isn't it? Come back. Um, it's so funny in Australia. Like if you go to the states, they're okay about talking how great they are, but they don't mean it as in like oh, aren't I amazing? They just believe that they're good at what they do because they've practiced it. Whereas in Australia, it's a bit of a different gig, you know. If you start saying what you're good at, everybody's around you to kind of pull you down and go, he's got such a big head, you know. Oh, she's so up herself, you know. And so um, those sort of spaces is imagine if we could actually get over ourselves and be okay with who we are and why we're wired and, uh, and really respect who we are because that's what the boys are saying is you have to start here first. And that's the whole process of these nine belts is understanding you first and being okay with you to be able to have the skills to be able to be in your world. Yeah. Uh, so for me personally, family were like a massive scapegoat in like how I acted and everything. Because it's not so much, it's not specifically losing family or losing different sort of connections. It's just, just family in itself. Because if you think of it this way, in like friendship circles, to be perfectly honest, my friendship circles have changed probably tenfold over however long. Sure. But, you know, you, you lose friends, you make new ones. Mm -hmm. If you've got family, family don't change. Unless, of course, your siblings or anyone else has more kids, but even then it doesn't change, it just grows. Right? So, if, if then, at that point, you notice, like, you know, if you're fading away from your family or your family are fading away from you, either yourself or, or you've got to have that encouragement around you, whether or not your friends are around you, your family are always going to be there and no one's going to change. So yeah. if you don't want to lose them, then something has to sort of click. And yeah, I, I reckon for me it was um, growing up, I was a tool, you know, like at school, and I mean a bad tool. And, uh, and so therefore, I didn't respect who I was, so therefore it was like with mum and dad, it was always like they were, we were always at war. You know, or the principal, or the teacher, I was always on detention, you know. <coughs> well, back then they used to give the rod, you know, it was a cane across your hand, you know. And so, um, yeah, that was that kind of space. Is that a hand tickling your head? Yeah? Good job. <laughs> yeah? Um, I think my point was when I realised that other people were being so Yeah. Yeah, I probably, I probably, that was a good one, you know. And for me, you're probably on 52. Probably took until I was 40 until I had my finger in the air at everybody else, you know, <laughs> because uh, I was so manipulated by that. Don't know what that means off camera, you know. So, uh, uh, <laughs> so that's what that means. Is like that's what I had to have that attitude inside. It wasn't a f you to everybody. It was like, hang on, I find myself so twisted out of shape, trying to conform and please everybody, that I didn't know who I was. And so your self respect, what you shared tonight, boys, is brilliant. Yes, Bon. Um, my point was when I self-reflected and saw the way that I speak to myself and how I let others treat me. Yeah. So we have this thing uh, at Bridge Builders where is if you say the word can't, what do we say? That's, you, that's exactly how we follow it up. So if someone says I can't do that, we go, well then you're right. Because when you say you can't do it, what have you done? Accepted. You've accepted that it's, it's over. It's done. You can't. And who changes you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So we just heard tonight that everybody else changes us. But we've got this thing that says, who changes us? It's us. But for some reason, we're so manipulated by our friends and so manipulated by our circles and our families, and we're so uh, easily influenced by them to fit in, 
that maybe we don't change us. Maybe everybody else changes us. But imagine, like what the lad said tonight, that you could actually get to a point where you went and said, you know what? I'm sick and tired of everybody changing me. I'm sick and tired of everybody kind of telling me how I should be. I'm just going to be me. I'm going to learn who I am. Wouldn't that be an amazing person to know? Josh had this insightful, when my boys were sharing with me the other night, Josh had this insightful moment and he rolled over it there. I don't know if you heard the, the little phrase he had right at sort of at the start, his second paragraph. Did you hear what he said about friends and uh, best friends and acquaintances? Repeat it. No, I don't want you to repeat it. It's stuck in my head. Yeah? It's about me, you know, not Yeah, it was before that. When Josh shared this the other night with me, I, everything else he said was like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> no offence, love you. You know, there was no, there was this, mo I wrote it down on my phone. There are times when acquaintances <coughs> could become your best friend. I've seen that happen here, where people that they bump into at Bridge Builders, all of a sudden, over a period of time, become best friends. And I've also seen people who have been best friends blow it apart and become acquaintances. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's a good thing to see some of your best friends become your acquaintances because they might be a negative influence, yeah? Last one, yeah? My change was when I understand <laughs> if you have someone you don't like, you don't have to be friends, but still be friendly to them. Yeah. So it's about respect. I think James was saying that before. It's about we can still be um, a good friend of mine. Uh, he says to me uh, all the time, stay classy. Stay classy. No matter what comes at you, stay classy. You know, and I th I, that echoes in my mind that when you have things that people say about you behind your back, things that people say online, people that say things to your face, stay classy. Because you know what? By staying classy, you don't lower yourself to that level of... Um, the value. So, guys, well done. I think it's amazing. Uh, if you didn't take any notes, you can look at it again. So, this week, practice what the boys have said to you. You know, have a bit of a look at do you actually <coughs> respect yourself? Because if you don't, one of the triggers of knowing how to do that is if you're always in trouble, if you're always being naughty, you know, smack, um, then uh, you might not respect who you are as a person. Might be something worth looking at. And uh, maybe have a look at your friendship circle. Maybe it's time for a bit of a spring clean. Just saying. Good job. Well done for chance together. Let's do it. Yeah.